Hi there, I'm Matt Holland and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with the weekly news show. Another another week without a league game, but we did have a full blast of, of cup games again. It was the FAI Cup this weekend. Uh, first round of it. Um, we'll just quickly run through the, the results and we'll just have a general chit chat then really about any other news that's happening in in the Irish world football wise. Um, I suppose one of the shocks of the round really was um Drogheda, um knocked out Ro uh, Rovers. Um, probably Rovers were probably looking at one of those games where maybe they could have gone on a cup run. You know, um, it it's one of those kind of where it puts the glass on the season. You know, you start to look at European football etc. But Drogheda had other other. Other thoughts really, and you know, went one 0 up with Chris Lyons, then Rovers went down to ten men, and you know they hung on, and it's, uh, you know, it's not the result that Rovers want going into the the Dublin Derby at the weekend, but a great result for Drogheda, and they're flying at the moment really. Um, another kind of uh, first division team getting a good result really was uh, Finn Harps, uh, three one victory over Bray, a little bit of positivity kind of coming back with Bray, you know, there's all the, the very good news being done at the club and a lot of really nice thoughts like simple things like kids go in free i think the ice cream van goes down there etc etc but unfortunately they are really really in a rebuilding stage uh, and they're probably the reality is they're looking at rebuilding again in in, in the first division next season and um, the cup isn't really the priority it, again it would be nice to get a little bit of gloss but it wasn't to be um three one victory for finn harps um Big, I suppose the biggest result in terms of goals wise was was Bowes. You know, a team that's maybe we could we've spoke many times in the show here where they're really struggling to get goals and struggling to make that breakthrough and struggling really to turn their performances into goals and and thus uh, victories. But th they were off the mark big time with seven goals. Um, Denny Corcoran, Lundy, Kelly, uh, Matheson and Stokes and even Keith Ward got off the mark as well. So a seven 0 victory over over Wexford. Um, proper one of these kind of unfortunately for Wexford one of these cup hammerings um, the other another Dublin team that we've spoke about an almost group together uh, in terms of their performances and their their good play not being reflected in results was, was Pats um, a local derby with Inchicore um, you know speaking to a couple of the Pats guys in, in the midweek the, the kind of the joke really was that some of the Inchicore boys would have less distance to travel <laughs> to the game than, than Pats at Inchicore and you know very much a case of a, a local derby and you know I think by and large most of the Inchicore team was Pat supporters. Um, Inchicore they held on late Um, you know Pat's had a lot of early opportunities I think they hit the bar a couple of times but made a breakthrough I think around just before the hour mark but they eventually ran out 5-0 victors. Um, Dara Marley, Conor Byrne got two, uh, Colin Byrne got two and Jake Regan got two as well so 5-0 victory. Um, Another one of the big hitters then Dundalk um kind of undone a little bit of damage recently. Um three nil victory over Core Ramblers. Uh Rona Murray with a brace, um with Jamie McGraw with the other. Um that steadies the ship really again from them. Just you know, we spoke, I think it was on last week's show where they just needed to kind of just calm things down again. Just you know, the the result in Europe was horrible um in all aspects really. But you know, they've got the show back on the road now again and you know it could very well go on a on a cup run. Um I had to had to get a plug in about the next result, you know, uh, Paul's uh, Shelburne, um, nice four 0 victory over at Lone there, um, maybe the cup run is on, maybe they'll get one of the big teams here and we we'll go on the bandwagon, but yeah, four 0 victory over, over at Lone was an OG Patrick Kavanagh, uh, Greg Moorhouse and Larkin Fitzgerald with the goals and uh, yeah no, probably have to speak most about these results here. Um, very good follower, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Yeah, we'll even have to speak a lot longer with it. Yeah, no, a, a good result, a good result for Shells. Um, you know, they they're very much one of these clubs on the rebuilding stage. Um, uh, and that that kind of cup run would would just go down really really nicely with everything the way it's going on at the moment. Uh, UCD as well. Then I had another. Another vic had a victory over Pike Rovers, uh, two 0 Um, as did probably one of the biggest upsets of the round, really. Um, Longford winning one 0 at the showgrounds. Um, Sligo. Um, yeah, things are great there. Um, you know, it's another one of these results. You know, we've talked about other clubs having a kind of run of positivity. Well, it's very much the opposite end of the spectrum, unfortunately for, for Rovers at the moment. Um, and that cup run doesn't really help things at all. Um, what else? Just to wrap through the results, the other big team, Cork five one victory over Home Farm. You know, 
a result that we kind of expected. Um, sack full of goals, he gets things off the mark. Another club that's, you know, there at the top, and even why it wouldn't be the priority. They always like to, it looks like, well, it doesn't look like at the moment it's neck and neck on the top of the league. You know, if you were probably betting now, you'd probably lean slightly towards Dundalk. And usually, the way things have gone recently is one of the teams will win the, win the league, and the other one will probably win the cup. So, we might see it again here. Um, and then, of course, the, the second round draw was made this evening. Um, I'll just quickly run through the ties uh, here. So it's CAE Ranch against UCD. Um, Galway, who unfortunately doesn't look like the Champions League that I may have spoke about a couple of weeks ago. That might be to be paused again because it looks like our Saudi friends' uh, um, money is drying up a little bit or that takeover is, is on hold. There's a huge bit of uncertainty at the moment. But... Um, um, we welcome down Bowes uh, to the to uh, down to Dyke Road to Terryland Park for that one. Uh, Derry play Pats. That's probably tied the round to Premier League Division teams. Dundalk host Finn Harps. Uh, Cork host Maynooth University Town. Drogheda uh, host Waterford. Uh, Limerick host Cavan TV, and Longford host Shelburne. Um, was definitely a game we'll have a lot of interest in. But yeah, that's been that's been the cup. The second round of the cup. We'll just move on to some news now. Of course, before I move on, um, you probably would have seen it a lot, really, on our Instagram stories a lot. Um, friend of the show, uh, Aaron, was at the Blarney United game against Derry City. Uh, I tried to be gentle earlier on with him, but we can't really disguise that scoreline. Um, yeah, an absolute rocket in twelve two to Derry. Um, yeah, look, they got their they got their big day out really in the sun, but sadly the result um, didn't go their way and. Derry now will go on to face Pats, uh, as I said earlier, uh, in probably one of the tie of the round, the second round there. Um, that's been that's really been the cup action with not a lot of e- league action. You know, it's 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 uh, we're just going to quickly run through some of the news that's going to caught our eye in terms of an Irish point of view. Um, I suppose the first really thing that caught our eye earlier on, and we myself and spoke, um, Paul, we kind of spoke a little bit earlier on. Really, was the Damien Duff interview. I think he was doing a charity event earlier on. Quite fascinating now, um, like Duffer, he's one of these guys that, you know, some people take the piss out of him really, you know, being, call him boring, the, everyone kind of references that Hibernian ad from, from back of the day in his Chelsea days, but I have to say he's one of these guys that I find fascinating in terms of a football point of view, you know, he's really, really on cue, um, yeah, and he's one of these guys where you could just feel, you could sit down in a room and, you know, chat for hours about, about football and formations and stuff like that, and he kind of got a little bit of insight really to him today. Um, you know, he's speaking about, you know, kind of the Ireland really set up. Um, he speaks about, you know, probably how he doesn't really think that a Martin O'Neill is going to change his formation or his philosophy, really. You know, he talks about, you know, other teams, you know, having a, a, a structure and a, a set formation. Uh, and you know exactly what you're going to get. And everyone that comes into that team, then it doesn't really matter much about the personnel will come in and they know they've, a, you know, they've a pre-designed role to set in or a pre-designed style of football. Um, but we don't really get that with Ireland, and as he kind of openly says, we don't really we don't really know what formation or what sort of team we've we're going to come out with. I know we've we've spoken pulled our hairs out in kind of preview shows really up up um, coming up to big Ireland games, and you know it's been impossible to to predict his team. You don't know what what way he's going to go, and you know you know if you want to go a little step further, really you like and that's really without having a huge abundance of, of talent to deal with or to you know to select from and even still we seem to be kind of not make it up as we go along but we definitely don't have that structure and you know it's interesting there's one quote that really caught my eye here was Sweden, Iceland, even Denmark with Christian Eriksson they play ball and with Ireland I just don't see it changing I just don't you know he speaks about them playing possession football you making the pitch big but then there's the, the vulnerability and you know the lack of the risk really being wanted to be taken by um by I suppose the current regime under under Martin O'Neill and you know it's a it's a good article there in the independent you know it speaks about his I suppose he's not difficulties but he's um little bit of abrasions that he has with a with a couple of people in the game. You know, it's very open about his um about how far we're thinking he has been at his underage coaching role at Rovers, you know Everyone, I think it's well documented, you know, he has the, the kids in early before they go to school for some training, before, early morning training. And, you know, it's almost going to get mocked, mocked really because of it. And, you know, he just kind of speaks about, you know, I suppose it's a culture change, really. And, uh, yeah, no, it's a very good interview there. And it's, 
it's a, it's as I said, definitely a guy I would love to sit down and have a good football chat, and hopefully maybe someday we'll we'll get him in here. The other, I suppose, biggest news really of the last couple of days really has been the uh, transfer move. Daryl Horgan um has moved permanently from Preston up to Scotland to Hibs. Um, didn't start the game at the weekend, but kind of I think he came on with about a half an hour to go, and by all accounts, um, did did pretty okay. Everyone seemed a positive reaction with him so yeah let's hope he gets a run in the team you know Preston move didn't really work out you know it was probably you know after a good kind of start it kind of just dwindled away and probably doesn't help the way Preston's form has been there and they're playing such good football they're in such a decent form it's always a struggle once you're out of the team to come back into it so let's hope you know for for everyone's sake that he gets a run at Hibs and more importantly then as a result gets a run in the Irish team because I think he is a player that you know could very much do it could do a job for us and uh, hey yeah let, let's hope that uh, we, we all wish him the, the best with that move and let's hope it out, works out well for him um some other news and not as quite as good is um, Shea, um sean mcguire um another injury sadly for him and looks like he's going to miss out in the, the september round of games um that's wales and poland two away trips um yeah he's one of these players that's struggling to catch a break really in terms of the international scene, you know, he's made his debut, and then since then, since then, you know, it's hard to think of a stage where he's kind of got a run of teams for Ireland where we all thought he was going to have um, um, decent club form in between the injuries, and it's just you know, we were all hoping because let's be honest, um, striker wise uh, for Ireland, we're not really you know full of full of options at the moment, and it would have been nice, you know, I think you ask any any Ireland fan what what striker you want in the year Irish team. He, most people would lean towards Maguire, but sadly, um, he's out now. I think it's a two months. Alex Neal said he's going to be out for another hamstring injury. So again, it's very much a case of let's hope that that recovers quite well and that he does get this run in the in the Ireland jersey that I think he deserves. Um, wrapping up the rest of the news, then it's um, Ireland have secured this. Are uh, reportedly secured the services of a uh, Bayern Munich player uh, Ryan Johansson. Um, he's played for 17 year old played for Sweden previously but uh, uh, one of these players that you know qualifiers under uh, he's not the, not quite the granny rule his mother is from Westmead apparently um, he played against Man City uh, pre-season um, so um, be cool if we can get him um, I have to say he's not a player that I know a hell of a lot about he's one of these players where I will do a lot of research but if he's on the books of, of a club as big as Bayern Munich, um, you know, can't, can't really be too far wrong, Kelly, can he? Um, that's really it, you know, wrapping up the rest of the news. Then it's just the, um, really, I think there's been a couple of articles written about, you know, the as the season starts back about the Irish abroad, you know, we have a couple of uh, players in, in, the, in the Premier League at the moment, you know, you've got always Greg Cunningham. Um, um, who hopefully will get a run for Cardiff. Um, fine goal, be man. So, no, 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 it would be nice. Another guy that's been had a horrific time with injuries. You know, since he kind of made that breakthrough under, um, I think it was Mancini at the time. He played a cup game. Played a couple of appearances in the league, even for for Man City. But uh, yeah, let's hope he gets a run. And um, player that's highly, highly spoken about. Um, and again, for Irish point of view, it's always good to see players doing well in the in the in the top division in England as well and it can only buy well for us um, I suppose the other most high profile piece of transfer news was um, a loan signing actually um, Harry Arthur um, who struggled big time um, for appearances really with uh, with Bournemouth at the time I think he did I see a stat over the weekend where he, he I think he started the game since February or something it's been quite a while I know he's definitely found his opportunity is limited uh, at uh, at uh, Bournemouth, but he's made a, a loan move to Cardiff as well. So he joins up with Craig Cunningham. Couldn't play at the weekend uh, against his parent club, but let's hope for everyone's sake that he um, gets a run of team, a run, a run of games really, and goes in that run because I really think that uh, Arthur could really be the key to our, our midfield if we were to play any sort of decent football if we were to get any sort of control under uh, on our games. I think our, Arthur is key. You know, we, we look at. We look at other players. We look. We we look at even Hendrick at Burnley. He looks like he could be in a bit of trouble, particularly if Burnley continue with the with a four four two formation where they go two up top. And we've seen Hendrick 
kind of struggle at times to play in the two. He's one of these players that's pretty much your defensive minded uh, number 10 really I suppose is the best way well that's the way I think he's most benefit beneficial and gets the most out of him that's where he played a lot of football last season for Burnley um, but if they go to two up top he's probably going to struggle to get a bit of game time so let, let's hope things improve there quickly for him I suppose the other piece of transfer news while it doesn't it's not a direct Irish player um, it's probably going to have a lot of impact really um, is the, the low move that will be a, a permanent move like next summer of Danny Ings to Southampton uh, let's hope that it doesn't really, you know, it be the the kick in the stones really for Shane Long. And let's hope that he can continue on. That you know, Ings doesn't become that that striker up front. You know, they played a lot of a lot of football last season as just the one up front. Um, so let's hope um, for Shane Long's sake and for Ireland's sake. We spoke about you know the lack of strikers and striker options in the squad. But you know, I think Ireland, if we're to do well, need need everyone, all the players that we can, particularly up front with Maguire's injury coming into these two games. So let's hope. Touch wood and all that for for Shane, for Shane Long that you know he's not really he's not really kicked out of the scene then he still gets a good bit of game time, um that's really it, um that's be really been the the news show if there's anything that you want discussed by all means get in touch with the show you know you know follow us on Instagram follow us on Facebook, YouTube, uh Twitter etc we're all we're all there numbers are flying by the the last couple of weeks you know really really getting a lot of interaction so let's keep it up folks um anthony you want to talk about anthony you disagree with me anthony you want me to talk about next week anthony you want to talk about what paul or whatever just drop us drop us a message on any one of the social media platforms keep an eye out there's been an abundance of of uh, content even the last week alone it's been belted out of it there's some some great content there um so keep an eye out for that and um yeah look we'll we'll speak to you all very soon thanks for watching